questions. Um, first of all, can you explain what the new federal guidelines are um, as far as nitrogen levels in the Bay? Or other any other water, way, I guess? Um, the, the state and the feds have something called TMDL, which is Total Maximum Daily Load. And this is the level of whatever. And it might be a nutrient, it might be a metal, it might be oxygen levels or, that um, are required in order to maintain that water body in, at a certain quality level. So for Tampa Bay, they have identified a TMDL, a total maximum daily load for nitrogen, uh, that uh, we cannot go above or it is, it is estimated that there would be a degradation of the water, of the water body. When was this change enacted? Is this something recent? Or? There have been TMDLs for a long time. And uh, in Tampa Bay, we had, uh, I can't tell you the exact um, uh, dates or levels uh, of that, but uh, in 2009, the feds determined that there would be this TMDL for Tampa Bay. So, um, for nitrogen. One of the things that helps cut back on those load levels are on localities having the fertilizer ordinances that ban uh, nitrogen fertilizers during the rainy season. Um, why is that important? How does it help? And I, what's being done to kind of further those efforts? The um, fertilizer ordinances are various types. There are some that ban totally the use of fertilizer in the summer, summer rainy season, when things are more likely to run off quickly and not get assimilated into the lawn. Um, some just control the nitrogen level in the, in the fertilizer, and some limit the amount of fertilizer you should be putting on your lawn or uh, often target commercial uh, landscape management companies because it's easier to target them than the individual citizen and for enforcement purposes. Uh, why it's important is that nitrogen is our limiting nutrient. Uh, basically everything needs phosphorus and nitrogen to grow, even people, and we need them in measured amounts. And, um, they sort of control each other, they sort of grow together. Uh, and for simplicity's sake, say you have to have equal, equal amounts of that in your diet. If you have too much phosphorus, uh, but not enough nitrogen, then only the amount of phosphorus that's equal to the amount of nitrogen that you have in your diet will be taken up. The rest of it will be discarded because they go together and they are used in equal quantities. So because we have so much natural phosphorus in our, um, in our system because of the phosphate mining, just our land is naturally rich in phosphorus, we can't really control that very well. So if we can control the, man, the amount of nitrogen in the system, and most of that is uh, man-made or man-produced or comes from, say, animal waste and things like that. But if we can control the nitrogen, then it doesn't really matter how much phosphorus we have because it can't be taken up into the system because only the same amount as we have of nitrogen. So that's why if we can control nitrogen, we can control that growth of um, algae in the water and the degradation of water quality. So what is the RPC's role in this? You mentioned education, getting localities on board, why it's important. What, explain that to me a little bit. Um, we have a contract actually with the Tampa Bay Estuary Program to implement this idea of getting uh, the word out to local governments and to the private sector about these federal mandates and how important it is that um, we meet those regulations, control the nitrogen, and how best to do that at the local government level. And lastly, um, money that's coming from the Restore Act, um, is any of that going to benefit any of these initiatives or is that that? Because I know that's for research and restoration efforts. Does this count or? It definitely could. Uh, it's not just re re restoration and um, monitoring efforts, it's uh, environmental projects. So, uh, for example, there are three pots of money. The one pot of money that yesterday program uh, is trying to coordinate is is only for environmental projects and it can be restoration it can be monitoring it can be water quality improvements it can be land acquisition it can be any, anything related to the environment that's going to help restore the environment 
yeah. improve so the environment. Uh, yeah. So it definitely could. Um, as I think that they they might fall lower on the priority list of uh, projects, but there is an awful lot that, that local governments can do. Uh, that that could be funded, not necessarily from that pot, but from the other two pots that are environment and economic.